Well, as promised, in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to build a macro. We're going to take the processes that we've done, the order of steps that we've done, and we're going to put them in a macro in that same order, and we're going to let the macro run. It's going to be a lot quicker, it's going to be a lot more efficient, and it's going to be automated. So let's get started. This is the same screen as the previous lecture, but it's before we did any processing on it. The only thing that I've done on this again is content editing and noise reduction. I did noise reduction manually, but all of the other processing that we did manually, I have removed from this waveform because now we're going to put it in a macro and we're going to let the macro do the work for us. So let's build a macro using the steps that we used in the previous lecture. To build a macro, we simply come up to the tools drop down menu and we go to macro manager. And you'll see I have a lot of different macros in here for different things that I do. Macros are something that I use all the time and that I'm very familiar with. But we're going to make a new macro. So we're going to click new and let's call this one school, shall we? Kind of has a ring to it. Let's call it school. And when we create school, we'll see it here in the left hand column. And in the right hand column are the steps in the macro. Right now there are none. The only step that's in there is the default step of end. Macros in any software program have to be told when to stop running or they just keep going. Audacity is no different. And so the last command of a macro in Audacity is always the end command. It's telling the macro, good job. You did exactly what we wanted you to do. Take a break. It's time to stop. Go to lunch. Do something else. And so the macro then is freed up. It stops running and it knows how proud of it we are. Okay, that's probably going a little too far. But you'll remember the first step that we did was noise reduction, and again, I've already got noise reduction on this, so we're not going to put that step into a macro. But instead, we're going to start with the filter curve EQ, which was the next step that we did when we did this manually. So if we come to the insert button, it opens up this window, and this window has a lot of stuff in it. It has a lot of different commands, it even has other macros. You can call a different macro from the macro that you're building if you want to. You can call three or four different macros from one macro, and that can become really useful. But for the sake of what we're doing, we're going to keep it simple. And so the first thing that we want to do is the filter curve EQ. Now, unfortunately, you can't start typing and search for a filter curve EQ. It's not going to let you. I wish it did, but it doesn't. And so I'm going to come down into this bottom window and I'm just going to scroll until I get over into the F's. And when I get over into the F's, there's my filter curve EQ. So I click once on it. It tells me up here in the top that I've got filter curve EQ selected and it gives me some parameters. Those parameters are the settings for the filter curve EQ, but it's a weird way to look at that. So if we come up to edit parameters, it's going to open the filter curve EQ window that we're used to seeing. And there's our filter curve. Again, it looks like it's the same one that we used last time, but I'm going to go into my presets because one can never be too careful. And I'm going to select AT2040 once again. And there it is, it's right there. So now if I click apply, it takes those parameters that I just set and put them in the parameters window. So I know I've got the filter curve EQ set to the preset that I actually want to use. So I'm going to tell it okay. And when I do, it's going to put that filter curve EQ as a step in my macro. And as we build a macro, it's going to build the macro from the top down. So the next step that we're going to put in is loudness normalization. So again, we go to the insert tab. We're going to scroll over this time into the L's somewhere over here, and we're going to pick loudness normalization. And then just to be on the safe side, we're going to edit parameters. And we're going to make sure that we're still set at perceived loudness of a minus 19 dB LUFS, and we are. We don't care again about stereo channels because we're working on a mono channel. And we're not going to check that last box to treat mono as dual mono. So right now I'm going to click apply, and then I'm going to click OK. And now we have two steps in our macro. First of all, we're applying a filter curve EQ, which is what we want to do up front. And then we're applying loudness normalization to a minus 19 dB LUFS. Now you remember that the next action that we want is to apply a limiter. So let's go back to our insert tab and let's scroll over to the L's again one more time. Somewhere over here, where are they? There they are. 
and let's click once on the limiter and let's edit those parameters. And again, we have the same parameters, a soft limit at a minus two dB. We're not applying any makeup gain. This is what we want. So let's click apply. And once we click apply, we're safe to click OK. And now we've got three steps in our macro. We're going to apply the filter curve. We're going to apply loudness normalization to a minus 19 dB lefts. And then we're going to apply the limiter to a minus 2 dB true peak. Now remember, the reason why I put the limiter in there isn't because this file is really loud and you know, needs a lot of limiter. I put it in there as a course of habit. It's kind of like pressing Z to get to the zero crossing. It's just automatic with me because sometimes I might have a waveform that's got a lot of uh, loudness to it, a lot of gain in it, and it might be close to clipping. So I always put a limiter on it just in case because I can run a macro on any kind of a waveform and I don't necessarily know what the waveform characteristics are as I run the macro. So a limiter is always a good idea to stick in there just in case. So that's why I do it. Now the next step that we did was we applied the declicker. So let's go back to insert and this time we're not scrolling quite as far. We're just going to go here to the D's and somewhere in here there should be a declicker. There it is. Let's look at our parameters just to be on the safe side even though we know nothing's changed. We still look good there. We're going to click apply and then we're going to click OK. So now we've got a filter curve EQ, we've got loudness normalization, we've got a limiter and we've got a declicker. But let's do one more thing that we didn't do in the last step. Let's export this waveform. And let's export it not as an MP3, but as a WAV file. And the reason why I want to export it as a WAV file and not an MP3 is because in the next lesson, we're going to talk about the Alphonic desktop leveler. I like to keep my audio in WAV format as long as possible. Why, you ask? Well, simply because a wave format is an uncompressed, lossless format. In other words, it's as close to reality as you can get. There's no compression in it. There's no loss in it. It's a true representation of the audio that I have processed. And because I'm going to import this file into a phonic and not upload it onto a podcast server, I'm going to keep it as a wave file as long as I can. And you'll see in the next lesson, when we import it into Alphonic, we'll export it from there as an MP3. But let's keep it as a WAV file for as long as we can. So let's export this file, shall we? Let's go up to Insert. And this time we're going to scroll over into the E's, somewhere over here, probably after the D's. And we have some export options. Let's select Export as WAV. And there's no parameters to set on this. It's just going to take the WAV file that's already in Audacity because Audacity works with WAV files. All of these tracks that we've been working on are by default WAV files. So we're going to keep it as a WAV file and we're going to export it. Now our school macro is done. But let's not forget to save it. If we do forget to save it and press close, it will prompt us to save it. So let's select the Save button. And now we've saved our macro as school, so let's close it out. Now we have an option at this point to run the macro manually. We can come up to the Tools drop down menu and we can apply the macro manually. We just scroll down to that last one there of school and we can apply it that way, or we can apply a shortcut key to it. You'll see that I have another one here called Bootcamp School, which I've used previously, and the shortcut key to that, again, I'm on a Mac, looks kind of funny if you're on Windows but it's option B on a Mac. Let's see if option S is available to use as a keyboard shortcut for our school macro. So let's come back over here to the Audacity drop-down menu again and go to Preferences. And once we're in Preferences, let's look at our keyboard shortcuts again. Now remember, we named this macro school. So if we search on the word school, it should come up, along with that other one probably. So there they are. We have apply macro. I've, uh, I've put the option B on the bootcamp school. See what I did there? Option B, bootcamp. So let's try option S for just our school macro. Do you remember how to do this? If we click once on it right there, we can come down into this window and I can press option S. And then from there, I can press set. 
And if that option S isn't available, it will tell me because it doesn't want any kind of a conflict when we're talking about uh, shortcut keys. So I'm going to click on set. And now we see that our school macro has the keyboard shortcut option S. So I'm going to tell it OK. And now our waveform is selected. It's ready to go. So instead of going up to the tools drop down menu, I can just press the keyboard shortcut option S, which is what I'm going to do now. And it's going to run the macro. You'll see it run through it. And then it's going to export it as a wave file. So here's option S. So all of those things that we did manually, we dumped into a macro and we asked the macro to do it for us automatically. And as you can see, the macro is much faster. We didn't have to go step by step by step. Now we've got these steps in a macro and we can reuse that macro over and over again to save us some time in our editing. Now let's go grab that WAV file and take a look at it. I'm gonna come down to my finder window and it should have dumped it in the same directory that I've got the project saved in. I save the project as macro.aup3, and there's our macro.wave file from today. So let's do this. I'm going to kind of move this out of the way, and let's drag macro.wave back into our project, and let's do a, a stare and compare. I'm going to unmute it here, just so we can look at it and kind of compare. And it's an exact representation or an exact duplication of the file that we exported. So we should be good to go. So let's import this into the Auphonic desktop app, and let me show you what it will do in the final production of this waveform. I'll see you there. So there's a look at how to build and run a macro within Audacity. It's a tool that I use all the time. In the next lesson, I'm going to introduce you to Auphonic. Auphonic is the last step that I use in my mastering process. So I'll see you there.